We're back in the shop again. This time we got the Forerunner in, and today we're gonna be installing a Midland MXT 115 VP3 radio pack. I reached out to Midland a few weeks ago. Um, we've be recently become an affiliate with them, and I reached out and pitched them an idea of making a few videos uh, based on some of the things I see as an inherent advantage for people to be using GMRS radios, and they were good enough to send out one demo unit for free for us to try and make these videos with. Just wanna say thanks to you guys right off the bat because without you guys watching, none of this would be possible and I wouldn't have been able to reach out to a big company like Midland and have them actually send us a product. Anyway, we're in the shop. We're gonna get this thing installed in the Forerunner. When installing this unit, there are some considerations you need to balance out before you start doing anything. The first is location. Are you going to be able to easily access the radio while also not having it in your way? We found the location immediately to the right of the steering column is providing the best balance of being out of the way and still being usable. The second consideration is how are you gonna get power to the unit? Now there are two ways to run this thing to the power. You're going to see inside the box a set of wires attached to a cigarette lighter plug. Now, if you want, you can just take the cigarette lighter plug, plug it directly into the 12 volt cigarette lighter port in your car. I guess I'm calling it a cigarette lighter, but th does anybody still smoke in their car anymore and actually use the lighter that comes? Do they even sell the lighter for that port anymore? I guess we'll just call it a 12 volt socket. Anyway, there's a plug for the 12 volt socket, but you can also, per their directions, clip it out, attach some connectors, and either hardwire it to your battery or run it into one of your accessory plugs somewhere, which we're gonna do the battery plug today because this thing's kind of limited on the accessory plugs off the fuse box. And for me, it's just simpler to run it to the battery with the positive cable, bolt it down, and then always know that whenever I wanna turn this radio on, I can just hit the button and turn it on. I don't have to have the ignition of the car turned on, which, to me, in a situation where maybe you lost your keys or whatever, I just wanna be able to know that I can use this thing without having the keys in the car. The flip side of that coin, you gotta make sure that you're shutting it off every time you're done using it or it is going to drain the battery. So without any further ado, let's get in there. The first step is going to be running the antenna wires and power cord to the radio mounting location. Because the MXT 115 VP3 kit comes with a lip mount made for attaching its ghost antenna to hoods and trunk deck lids, we will need to pass the cables through the firewall. There is already a wire loom passed through in the driver's footwell we are going to utilize. Go ahead and pop that grommet free from the engine bay side. Remember this guy, right? Okay, we're gonna take this in. It's gonna connect to the radio. We're gonna shove it through the firewall along with this plug, which is the patch cable for the antenna mount, both of those ends are gonna be pushed through the firewall. We're gonna catch them on the other side. All right, so once you get them through and you get them pulled through the other side, start feeding it through and pulling it out on the other side until you can get the wires to where you want to actually mount the radio and yet still be able to route them so that they're not gonna be in the way. This is gonna be especially uh, something we need to consider with ours because we're going to be routing the wires in an area where they could potentially fall down into my feet while I'm driving, which is something you definitely don't want to have happen. So we're going to spot where we're going to mount the radio and then we're going to go ahead and set the bracket in. The bracket is very easy to mount. It just comes with some screws. You might want to drill some very, very small pilot holes or just push the screws all the way in, depending on what surface you're going to go with. We're going to be mounting it in a plastic, so these things should be able to drill their way in. Once you've got the radio mounted and in the bracket, go ahead and connect the antenna and power cables to their respective spots in the back of the radio and then finish tidying up the cables in the cab. Okay, so now that we have that done, we're gonna wanna go ahead and clip off that 12 volt connector right at the end of the wires. We're gonna do this and then we're gonna patch in a set of connections. I ended up needing to build extra leads so both the positive and negative wires could reach their respective destinations. Fortunately, I had enough 14 gauge wire lying around in addition to some crimp on post connections in my electrical kit. You should have some way of making basic electrical repairs in your rig for field emergencies and I put a link in the description below to a well stocked one I like to use. I wouldn't take an older vehicle to the field without one, since electrical connections and wiring can deteriorate significantly over time and without a good way to patch a field repair together can leave you stranded somewhere. Don't let this happen to you. 
Once my leads were built, I slid on some heat-activated shrink tubing and soldered them into their respective ends of the radio power cable. While you could very easily connect these wires using crimped butt connectors, I prefer to solder any joint I can as this is the strongest and most durable way to make electrical connections. Plus, it's just kind of fun watching the solder melt. Once you've patched in the leads, go ahead and connect them. You can either connect the negative cable directly to the battery or to any grounding point on the body, while the red positive cable should go to the corresponding terminal on the battery. Once that's done, the final step under the hood is to mount the antenna. The lip connector will hold the antenna on most flat edges of your hood. We chose mounting to the back of the hood on the vehicle's center line. My thought here is that the center location will protect the antenna from getting roughed up the first time we push through some shrubbery on the trail. Once you have the antenna spotted, go ahead and run the securing studs down with the Allen wrench that came with the kit. Because I have an obsession with wiring looking neat, I chose to use some zip ties to secure the antenna cable to a couple of points on the firewall, as well as keeping the excess cable from uncoiling and making a mess in the engine bay. Okay, so there's your installation video. So how does it work? And a short answer, so far so good. We'll be explaining that question a little more in depth in another upcoming video, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out when we do. As always, I'm Matt Kester. You can find me on Instagram at Frugal Explorer Dad. Check out the channel's page on Instagram at Secondhand Overland. Until next time, be good.